I saw the way Suntech read and today I'll be sharing with you the journey on how I actually got started with Suntech read as well as what I actually decided along the last two years. If you check on my YouTube channel, you'd find a lot of Suntech read tutorials. November 2020, I mentioned some concerns about Suntech read even though there were insider buying. Then in July 2021, I mentioned favorably that Suntech's dividends had actually grew. And then in August 2022, I actually further added into Suntech REIT, calling it possibly the cheapest REIT in Singapore right now. Today in this discussion, I'll be sharing with you the latest numbers coming out from Suntech for first half 2023. Not just that, I'll give you details on my journey, my thought processes. Because you know, when Mr. Market hands me a loss, there are always learning points. I'll show you what was wrong but also equally what was well done. So if you're curious, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Let's pull up Suntech's share price chart to show you the journey so far as what I've promised. Hindsight again is 2020. So if we see in terms of investing, it's always incomplete information, correct? And that's why you need a margin of safety. And not just that, we need to not be overly aggressive in some of the assumptions we made. Back in November 2020, there was insider buying. That was the first video I've done. And I was starting to get aware of Suntech REIT's potential undervaluation. I don't know how long the recovery will be. But again, back in 2020, we were still unclear about COVID-19. Looking back at that period, that was when vaccination was created. But still, if you walk down to Suntech REIT in November 2020, you will realize that the mall is empty. There are a lot of office people were still working from home. Fast forward to July 2021, that was when I started to feel the recovery already. Even though there were repeated new strains affecting working in office, and there was still a lot of measures. There was no certainty that the pandemic would be over soon, but I was pretty optimistic by then already. The interesting part about Suntech Read is it actually showed increment in dividends per unit, DPU. This is the first white arrow with anticipation for room for recovery. Indeed, in the next few months ahead, Suntax REIT share price actually climbed in accordance to most of the REITs actually. It was in fact one of the top performing REITs and by April 2022, it actually cracked $1.80. I was confident that it could actually hit new highs because $1.80, it's still not reflecting a full recovery yet. And I do know that the convention center was not even running at full force back in April 2022. Travel was not in full flows yet. And as we know, Suntech with its fountain will always draw crowds down to visit the mall itself. Little did anyone know that April 2022 will be the near-term peak for Suntech's REIT share price as well as many other REITs. The reason is that that was the start of the Fed rate hike cycle. Pulling up a chart to show Fed rates, you would see that previously Fed rates were close to 0% but it started to skyrocket ever since April 2022. If you check, in June 2022, general markets were selling off, REITs included. This rate hike continued on and by August 2022, Fed had ballooned the interest rate by almost 200 basis points, 2% in just a few quick months. That's actually a number not seen in 10 years. That's why I actually had a video, which I'll link towards the end of this or so, for you to recap back and understand the thinking process, is that when we see conclusions and projections made back then in August 2022, something read will actually survive quite easily. I actually made this presentation to justify that the leverage concerns could be overblown. Even if interest rates could only climb by 1% more, the impact to dividends per unit may not be that bad. But what do I know, correct? And again, hindsight is 2020. If we pull back up the Fed rate chart, this climb continued on and on to an unprecedented 5 plus percent and could still be inching up even further. Take note again, if you ask anyone back in March 2022 how high the interest rates will climb, I don't think anyone will say 5% at least back then. But we always have to weigh latest numbers. That's why in July 2023, I've actually cut losses on Suntech REIT and exited fully. I used my SRS to invest and I actually chose to move all the capital to capital DC REIT to be still investing in REITs via a different asset class. I personally concluded that there will be a safer place to survive this high interest rate environment. But the first question again you might be thinking of is, isn't it obvious that Suntech REIT's peak was in April 2022? isn't investing selling at the high and buying at the low. My answer to that is DPU was actually still growing back in April 2022. Travel, as I mentioned, has not yet even fully recovered and the potential for new highs for Suntech REIT was there in my opinion. 
investing again is not picking when's the peak because nobody knows for sure. And what I concluded on the other hand is in August 2022 that the leverage concerns were quite easily overblown. That's why I've even accumulated more in that period. When I bought back then, of course I'm expecting a resumption of the bull leg up, but again hindsight is 2020. What are main lessons, correct? If you were to see back in the entire journey, I'd like to point upon a specific zone, which is this question mark zone over here. This was a further leg down in October 2022. Take note again, what I circled over here is when interest rates have climbed up even further and the stress that is facing Suntech REIT as well as many other REITs was getting quite evident. What I'd like to share is at this period, the crucial part is I did not double down. Again, when it comes to investing, don't be 100% too sure of any assumption. My assumption back then was that Suntech REIT could easily tolerate another 1% increment but not at least another unprecedented 2-3% to more from that point on. If you had asked previously before in the comment sections whether I was still buying Suntech REIT, what about Suntech REIT? My answer is I'm not buying further. I've actually mentioned that before. I realized that could have been an error and that the problem was not that small after all. Again, this is my approach, not investing advice, not suggesting for you to sell or buy Suntech REIT or any other REIT. Because when you hear this, you should make your own assumptions. When you are hearing this, situation could also have changed already. So you need to determine for yourself as a business owner. What I'm sharing right now with you is just my personal opinion, as well as the journey, the thinking process behind each and every decision. So if that's clear, let me smash the like button, especially if you like transparency and an open sharing from my own investment journey. Because it's always difficult to share losses, I'll actually leave one more towards the end of this whole tutorial for you to follow on a bit further. Now, let's move on to the next part, which is understanding all the latest numbers from first half 2023 coming up from Suntech Read. From management, it's mentioned that Singapore officers, the demand could be muted moving forward and rents will likely plateau. Plateau is still not terrible, actually. Singapore officers have actually shown very good performances. Suntech Read is 100% occupied and the rent was actually revised upwards in the last two years. If Suntech Read was only owning Suntech officers, and the leverage ratio is very low, you can actually bet that this could be one of the best performing REITs instead of one of the worst performing ones. OCBC has also highlighted more information. They've mentioned that there was higher maintenance fund contribution and the commencement of sinking fund for Suntech City and Suntech Singapore. If I were to interpret that correctly, that means increased expenses. With regards to Australia, it's also mentioned that there are supply pressures in Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide coupled with an imminent departure of a tenant at 55 Curie Street property. I'll come back in a while to touch on that. It's mentioned further that one positive was confirmation from banks to reduce the interest coverage ratio covenant from 2 times to 1.75 times giving it more breathing space. This doesn't seem very comforting. It's mentioned further that while management would prefer to pursue divestments in Australia, this would have been difficult due to high interest environment. As such, Suntech REIT will continue to seek divestment opportunities for more of its strata units at Suntech Office Towers. That's why they've actually sold another $11.5 million as of July 2023, making it a total of $288 million sold since 2021. This seems to me like selling the crown jewel so that we don't need to sell distressed assets. I get that from a business position because distressed assets would recover, it's just a time. So if you sell on that, it's also painful. I'd like to next highlight two parts that are possibly weak. The first is the Australian property. As we can see from this description, net property income in Australian dollars have actually increased in first half 2023 to 41.7 million in Australian dollars. But when we factor in in terms of Sing dollars, there's actually been a decrease. That's because Australian dollar sucks now. It's declined considerably against Sing dollar, but currency is always a game of cycles. Wait it out, one day Australian dollars will recover. I do understand that. But that's not the end of the problems. This is by UOB Kahian. Office demand is slowing in Sydney and Melbourne, where most of Suntech REIT's assets are. And just now we mentioned about 55 Curie Street property, occupancy for that is expected to drop from 100% to 59% in fourth quarter 2023 due to non-renewal from a government tenant. 
contribution will be affected by leasing downtime and high incentives possibly to find a new replacement. 55 Curie Street is the smallest piece of the Australian properties, but there's still a hit going to come that Suntec REIT must face. If you'd like to find out the occupancy rate, this is a quick snapshot. The bigger properties are in Sydney, 177 Pacific Highway and 21 Harry Street. They are doing fairly well and I've boxed up 55 Curie Street which will see a big drop in terms of occupancy rate. The third one in the middle there, Southgate Complex, that is under a joint venture approach and that is where I'd like to highlight the second weakness. If we compare first quarter 2023 and second quarter 2023, we would realize that joint venture income has been a steady drag in terms of overall performance. What Suntec owns mainly, which is Suntec Offices and Suntec Mall, is actually doing quite well. If you see in terms of the mall, performance has been actually quite spectacular. I like to eat my lunch there quite often, you might see me there. And that's why I've always had a soft spot for Suntec. I have curious questions to ask management. What I see also is that other REITs like Escort have actually raised capital, which is very painful right now. Can Suntec REIT avoid it? Joint venture properties are weak. These five are part under the joint venture segment. Can Suntec REIT consider divesting Marina Bay Link more or not? Or maybe bundle everything and sell it together with MBFC. That will be under the BFC Development LLP. This will be a big asset to divest and straight away reduce the debt equity ratio that Suntec REIT is facing. I was thinking cashing on debt might be better than Southgate Complex and as we know, Australian dollar is weak right now. Not too good to divest and lock in those losses. Or how about this? The UK properties. There's 50% ownership of Nova Limited and Nova Residential Limited. This was purchased for £430 million back in October 2020. My gut feeling is this has some capital gains already. And a good part is sterling pounds have actually recovered against Sing Dollar in the last 6 months. Could this 50% be so off or not to reduce the debt equity ratio as well as their low interest coverage ratio? As always, if you have better, smash the like button and leave your thoughts and comments in the section below. And check out this previous tutorial I had on Suntech REIT when I call it quite possibly the cheapest REIT in Singapore. If you have seen it already, let me suggest to you Capital DC REIT, which is something I've covered recently and where I've moved this capital towards. With that, I'll sign off from here and see you in either of these tutorials. Take care as always. Goodbye.